welcome to another KFH music video. So today we're going to be looking at the Yamaha C40 classical guitar and I believe it's now the C42 if you want to buy one of these from Yamaha because they've done some slight modifications. I'm not quite sure what but I believe they still play the same and they're about the same price point as well so I wouldn't be too worried. My experience with Yamaha has always been very quality products. I love my steel strings both electric and acoustic but they really do take a toll on your fingertips um, and so I can only play for about 30 minutes every two days and so that hampers practice and everything and a lot of people said well just get a classical guitar and I'd never thought about that because I don't particularly want to play classical music but there's a lot of advantages to classical guitars which is that they're very light there's a lot less tension which means you can really just pick them up and play them around the house which is absolutely fantastic they've got a very nice mellow tone as well due to the lower tension which is really quite good and it's a nice tool to have in your arsenal if you want that sound first things first here is the case and very nice case. I got it from Amazon. Nothing in this video is sponsored. There's no affiliate links. I just like to tell you where I got the products from because I know it can be really frustrating when you see something you like and you don't know where to get it from. Let's get the guitar out. And here is the actual guitar. Now, I think this is a really lovely guitar actually. It's got a very nice finish. This is a stained top to make it look like cedar, which the more expensive classical guitars have and it's got a very nice back which again is all just stained it's plywood I actually really like plywood guitars I think plywood guitars are, uh, are lovely and they're a lot more stable when you take them outside and if the temperature changes and I'm just a beginner I don't notice the tone difference anyway I mean really as long as you've got a nice built guitar that's all you want so you can learn and Personally, I, I'm not sure I'd ever want to own over a thousand pounds worth of guitar because goodness if you if you bump it or scratch it You're gonna be crying all day But anyway, so we've got a nice rosewood fingerboard and a nice rosewood bridge And as I say, it's plywood and then we've just got some some decent quality tuners up at the top with a nice brass and chrome finish and It's plastic nut and plastic saddle and if you'll notice the saddle is half out right now and the reason for that is that the action's a little bit high and I know it's a classical guitar before anyone kind of comments they do have a much higher action than a steel string almost double in some cases but here it's still just a little bit too high um, so we will be having a look at that and probably shaving the bridge down a bit I've got some new strings for the guitar and we're also going to give it a general clean and polish so without further ado Let's get going. Okay, so here is the guitar close up, so we can have a look at this bridge area. And as I say, it's half pushed out right now, so if I push it all the way back in, like so, now we can have a look. And you can see that it's not too bad. The action is, it's okay, but it's just slightly high. So I'm not talking about taking a lot off this, just literally a couple millimeters maximum I mean probably about one millimeter because you have a doubling effect here so where the 12th fret is here if you want to take one millimeter off here it's about two millimeters off the bridge so we'll probably do that but we'll start with one millimeter first and these are the old strings and I've not cleaned it yet mainly because I'm gonna do this work first and then once I know the guitar is set up the way I like it's a simple enough job to just change everything and get it ready Bridge out, you can see that the, the action has actually dropped down to what a, a normal steel string guitar would actually be. But this is this is way too low for a classical guitar, and if you twang one, you can hear the, the buzzing. <laughs> so, absolutely no use. Um, fortunately, we're not we're not going to leave it like that. We're going to put a little bit off the bridge and then put it back in. So let's have a look at the, the bridge piece, and you can see that angle on it right there and we're gonna to have to keep that angle that's important because that's what locates it in the bottom of the rosewood bridge so you can also see it's got a taper on it which compensates for intonation and all that stuff and it's also got a very slight nick in it which again is for intonation so we don't want to touch the top because that's all cast in and the profile is perfect what we will do is take this flat bottom and we'll I've got a wee surface plate and some sandpaper and we'll mark it up to 
make sure we're taking it off evenly and we'll just slowly take this down a little bit measuring frequently as we go and we'll see how that works. Right so the first thing to do when lowering a saddle is you can see it's got this angle on it which is really important for locating with the bridge so I've used this Starrett combination square and just to set the angle right there so that now as I'm sanding down the way I can make sure the angle stays the same. I'll be using these calipers here to measure the distance at the top and bottom. They're in Imperial but it doesn't really matter as this is just comparing how much I'm taking off. I've got a wee ruler there just in case I need it and I've also got this surface plate here which I will use which I will use to put a bit of sandpaper on so that I can make sure I'm taking the bridge down level. Okay, so here we have the saddle and the first thing I'm going to do is take this graphite pencil and colour in the bottom because that will allow me to see if I'm sanding down evenly or not. If there's a big patch of graphite somewhere here, it's not a level bridge and that will cause problems when we put it back into the guitar. So then what you do is you put it face down on this angle and you rock it back and forwards to make sure it's perfectly located on that angle but we can check that with the combination square and then you very slowly rub it back and forth. This is not one of these jobs where you do it quickly because if you take too much off you can't put it back on and you're going to have to get yourself a new saddle. So I'm going to do this and I'll catch up with you when it's at the right height. Okay so here is the newly sanded saddle. And there's a slight taper forwards, which I'm not keen on, but I'm going to put a paper shim in there to just help that. You can see there's a slight gap just behind it. But anyway, it's at the right height now, and so we'll just measure that. And you measure at the 12th fret here. And here you want about 4 millimeters for the big E string. And down here you want about 3 millimeters. And that might not show up perfectly on camera, but I've measured this and it sounds really good. So I'll give you a wee test of what it sounds like and then we'll get on with cleaning it. Right, so I've G-tuned the strings again because after the test we now know that this sounds really nice actually and we've got the right action so it was about it was about one millimeter to 1.5 millimeters too high which does actually make quite a difference so we took about two millimeters off the bridge and it's much better for it so the next thing to do will be to cut off the strings and then I'll have a look at getting this bridge put in a little bit nicer see there's just up at the top here there's a little bit of rock and that's not good. Once you get further down it's better but a shim will do that the world of good. Using my pliers I'm going to come in and just cut the string like that and make sure there's no tension left on these strings you want them really loose because if they were up to tension and you cut them you can actually break the guitar that way so it's just not worth it. Okay so as you can see the strings are all removed now which is perfect and I've just been working on this bridge so as I said to you it's just a little bit too loose and especially when the strings came off it was even more loose and that just was not very good so I've got this wee post-it note and I just put it behind it and it wasn't actually loose in the middle it was just these two ends so as you can see on this side I cut that middle piece out so that we wouldn't be shimming the middle and then I just slowly started pushing the bridge in and then I got it all the way along and pushed it down and now we're rock solid which is really good and the bridge is actually sounding a lot better as well so the thing to do now is to get a wee knife and just run around and take the rest of the paper out and I think that solved that and that should help it with leaning forwards too much as well because hopefully now we've shimmed in front of it it'll pull it back the way now I've cut that you can see it's worked really well you can barely even tell there was a slight piece of shim stock in there and the bridge is totally solid now with no rocking at all but it's enough that you could just push it out if you wanted to which is perfect and I think we've got that cracked and so it's we know it's at the right height and now we've shimmed it 
to stop it causing any problems. Okay, so now it's time to clean the guitar. All the strings are off and we fix that wee issue with the bridge. I'm happy with that. So first things first, we'll go over it with this Dunlop 65 guitar polish and cleaner. I've not used that before, so I'll let you know what I think about that today. And then we've got the Dunlop 65 lemon oil and I've used that lots. It does a good job. I'll put that on the fingerboard and on the bridge. So let's get to it. While I have the strings off and the guitar here, I'm going to take the time to just use my files and go through all the frets and just make sure they're not sharp, just because it's worth it and it's one of those things where when the strings are back on, it's a real pain to try and sort out. A few of these frets, upon closer inspection, had lifted ever so slightly. Um, that can happen because the fretboard dries out slightly. Um, I'm going to oil it, but right now it makes sense to address this beforehand. So you just take a little bit of super glue, I had that over here, and you put it on a little bag. And then I've been using this dental pick here to just ever so slightly put a bit of glue each side and you'll watch it wick in. And then you just get something heavy, like these pliers, and you can just put that on top push down and it'll seat the frets back in and you hold it for about 30 seconds and now all our frets are sitting nice and level again it was mainly up in this area as I say the fretboard's a bit dry so once it's got a coat of oil that will do it much much better I've got these little fret covers and I'm just going to work my way along with a bit of Brasso and a bit of uh, Scotch Bright and just work along and polish all these frets up to a nice shine Right, so I have put the Brasso on all the frets and I've polished up the first three and you can see the real difference between the dull and the shiny frets. It's night and day and it makes such a difference to how the strings feel sliding on them as well. So I will continue working across the whole guitar and I'll get back when that's done. So all the frets are polished now and I'm just putting on a bit of lemon oil to the fretboard and the bridge and you can already see what a difference that makes just between the stuff that's been done and stuff that hasn't so you let this soak in it's already looking 10 times better and I'll do the same with the bridge back there and you can also see the grot that's just started to come off of it so I'll work away on this and give it a good old clean because I don't think it's been clean since it was new this is how the guitar is looking it's got a wonderful little shine on it now as you can see the bridge is looking much much better for a light coat of lemon oil and it's nice and stable now and the fretboard is again looking a lot better, it's got a good sheen to it. So the final thing to do now is put on the strings. Now I will be using some Diadro Classic Nylon, just a normal tension. And I might show you how to tie the end and tie the top, but other than that, we're pretty much finished. So this is how uh, the nylon strings come, which I've never used the nylon ones, so they're a bit confusing. But you've got your three sets of nylon ones, pure nylon here, and they're from the different varying sizes. And obviously they go big, medium, small. And then you've got your three wound nylon strings, so they have a metal winding on the outside. And I think they're silver plated, but I could be wrong. And then they go big, medium, small. So high E is the biggest metal one, and then you go big, medium, small, metal, and then you go to the nylons and you go big, medium, small. And so now I'm going to try and tie one on to the back and we'll see how that goes. Right, so the first thing to do is to take all those strings I just described and run them through the bridge. So come through the back hole, up and over, and have about the length from here to the back of the guitar left. And that's what we're going to use to tie the string around this part of the bridge here. And while you're doing that, these are very, very springy, so I've put a capo up on the fretboard just to hold them in place and stop them moving because they really are quite springy. Okay, so I think I figured this out. Basically, that string end that you had, you take it and you go underneath the main string, and then when you bring it back down, that creates a loop, and you go through that loop twice and then pull it tight, and it makes this little, nice little braided bit with a loop here which grabs the string and then what you do at the back is you tuck the last one into the string as it goes along so you tuck them all into each other and that seems 
to work alright, this seems nice and tight. So we'll go try up at the headstock now and see if this all works. Okay, so I've actually been making some really good progress. So you can see I've got these strings on and they're holding up at the bridge, <laughs> which for my first time ever doing that, I'm pretty pleased about. And if you come along the way, you can see that they look quite neat up at the headstock as well. So what I've been doing is I take my string and I pull it all the way along and I've got these angled just so I can feed them down and then you pull the string up here and you loop it back round and you use the opposite end of the nut, whichever side you're working on, as the spacer to allow a bit of slack in your string. And then basically you pull it tight and it should have a little loop around it. And now you can just use your string winder to tighten it up. So, I mean, all good so far, so let's keep pressing on. Amazingly enough, I have actually managed to do this, I think. So we're still not up to pitch yet, but we have all the ends nicely tied together and they're all nicely looped into each other. And then if we go along, we now have them all sitting quite nicely wrapped up at the headstock. And I, I think this is going to work. I can't see any reason why it won't. It might not be the prettiest thing should definitely work and we have strings so I'm gonna get this up to pitch and I'll come back once it's up to pitch and here is the final guitar so if I just you can see how beautifully shiny it is now it just looks an absolute treat I'm really pleased with these ends that I tied they seem to be holding really well and the same at the headstock it seems to be holding really well and it's just lovely it's just an absolute lovely lovely thing Really nice tone, really projects well. And it's really fun to play as well, just... So, I just really like it. So what I'll do now is I'll cut to a clip of me playing the guitar and you can see that. And there we go. So, I mean, <laughs> that's just my uh, my abilities after about a, a year of learning and I've only just started playing the classical. But I'm really liking it. A bit strange without a pick, but uh, yes, lovely, lovely instrument. Really like this C40 guitar. It is just fantastic in every way. I mean, Yamaha always seem to do quality and it doesn't matter what the price is. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, feel free to like the video, uh, maybe even subscribe. <laughs> right, thank you very much. Over and out.